welcome back to my channel where i like to make create and inspire fun art things with you justina here and as you see there is 90 days till halloween and i have these awesome diys that are made with dollar tree items that i know you will absolutely love these were so fun to make and the outcome was amazing so if you would like to see what i created and did just keep on watching and let's art today Jumping right into it, last year I found these wooden cutouts of Frankenstein's Monster and Bride of Frankenstein and I just thought they were so amazing. I was really impressed that Dollar Tree was carrying stuff like this and I believe if you're lucky enough they are carrying them this year as well. So I want to turn these two into some type of photo framed uh, decor piece and the first thing I do is start with the Frankenstein's monster cut out I cut off the little tag as you see here and I'm just placing him onto a piece of paper so that I can start painting him in I first start off with some black acrylic paint and I start painting in his hair thing about these wooden cutouts that I love is that you can customize this however you like and the outcome will still turn out amazing I take the same black acrylic paint and I'm painting in the bolts that are on his neck on both sides. Now it's time to work on his face and I take a few different types of greens in acrylic paints and I start adding it to his face and start blending the previous green in with the next one. That's how I get my different hues. I just keep blending until I like the desired look. Now I kept going back and forth if I should have just kept him black and white or paint him green. Now I never read the book my partner has and I really need to ask them if they were green green in the book or if they were black and white like the movie because I know I watched the original movie. <laughs> If you too have read the book, I would love to know. Just leave me a comment down in the comment section below. So I just keep adding and blending the paints together until, like I said earlier, I get the desired look that I want. This might take a few minutes depending on what type of style you go for. So I did put on some tunes and just kept on painting. This is was so fun that I kind of zoned out and I forgot <laughs> that everything else existed until I was completely finished. And lastly, for the painting, I added two coats of this metallic silver paint on top of the black on his bolt section just to make it more opaque and shiny. And then I set him aside to dry. Now for the paint on the Bride of Frankenstein, she will just pretty much be all black and white and I'm just painting all of her face white. Now after I completed this whole project, I wasn't sure if I painted her backwards. Now her scar is on the left side as you see here, but I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be on the right side. Like I said, I was painting her completely black and white, so I'm going in with black acrylic paint and filling up her whole hair area. <laughs> After that was completed, I just set her to the side to dry. Like I mentioned earlier, I wanted this to be like a framed photo. So Dollar Tree has these wood panels that are 11 by 14 inch at Dollar Tree for $3. But they also have these 12 by 12 panels for $3 as well. But I picked the 11 by 14. They fit these wooden cutouts perfectly. I removed all of the packaging from the wooden panel and as you see here I will be using the back of the panel for my framed area. Now uh, if you don't want to use one of these wooden panels, Dollar Tree does have picture frames that are 11 by 14 also. As you see here, I'm just showing you that I have some of these acrylic gems left over from a previous project and I wanted to add them to the outer edges of this frame. As you see here, I'm just placing them down and then I just 
just decided to go in with some hot glue and start adding it to the picture frame. I do add a little dollop as you see here, but the bigger the dollop, the better because it actually um, pushes to the side to the next gem. Now, when doing this, you want to put them as closely as possible just so that they all fit in a line and it actually looks like it was made that way. If you want a longer lasting hold or stronger glue, obviously you can change out the glue, but I do have an all purpose hot glue stick in here and it did hold up pretty nicely. I continue this until the whole picture frame is completely covered in these gems. Now since there are two wooden cutouts, I had to make two of these wooden picture frames. After that was completed, I did take it outside and give it two coats of my Rust-Oleum Glossy Spray Paint. Here's how it looks after it had time to dry and as you see here I wasn't too worried about getting the center filled but I love how the glossy spray paint makes the little gems shine. For the middle of that board I had contemplated a few different things. As you see here he looks great inside of it but I knew that something had to make him pop. So I have two different scrapbooks paper that I will use for each board. I am first trying to figure out which scrapbooking paper I liked but then decided to use both. As you see here I'm just placing it inside of the picture frame I will call it and pushing down on the outer edges to create a crease. Next I'm taking a pencil and just giving it a little dash so I know where to cut from there. Then I cut it out using a pair of scissors. <laughs> After I had that white piece of scrapbooking paper cut out, I do the same exact thing for the black scrapbooking paper as well. Before I glue anything down, I am setting a Frankenstein back on top of the scrapping scrapbooking paper to make sure I like the placement where it should be. Next I'm just taking some hot glue and I'm adding it to the outer edges of my frame and then adding the paper on top. Now you can use Mod Podge, glue glue, whatever you like. I just like using hot glue because it's more convenient and faster for myself. So I have some tumbling towers from Dollar Tree, their little Jenga game that everybody crafts with on YouTube and I decided I will use them as well for this project because I didn't want my Frankenstein's monster to be completely flat up against the picture frame. So as you see here, I'm just taking some hot glue and placing them in areas that you wouldn't be able to see from the sides or even in the front. Then I'm taking some more hot glue adding it onto those blocks and then placing him in the center of the picture frame and lastly for an added pop I have some of these plastic eyeballs that are from a floral arrangement that Dollar Tree carries every year and I wanted to add them to his little eye sockets here so all I do is just attach them with hot glue and that completes this picture frame With the Bride of Frankenstein's picture frame, I do everything exactly the same. I add the scrapbooking paper, the eyeballs to the little cutout, and the tumbling towers to her and attach everything using my hot glue gun. The last thing I do to both picture frames is add some jute twine to the back of them using some hot glue and masking tape so that I can hang my picture frames on the wall. And here is the Bride of Frankenstein. I believe that is her name. And I just absolutely love how these turned out. I am so sorry that my camera doesn't do this much justice, but they turned out so amazing.
Here's how the Frankenstein's monster turned out as well. I just think it's so awesome, especially with the little eyeballs staring right at you. Now, I did contemplate if I should add some lights to both of these in the background, but they look just amazing as is for my home decor. I would love to know what you guys think about this DIY down in the comments section. These have to be one of my favorites and I'm so happy how they turned out. Jumping right into the next DIY, I have another wooden cutout from Dollar Tree. It's this little kitty cat with a jack-o'-lantern in front of it. And I just thought these were so cute. So if you want a little cutesy candy tray, this is what I will be making for you today. <laughs> So I just removed the hanker from the kitty cat and I'm adding some hot glue in the holes where the hanger used to be. Now I would originally add some wood filler for this but I didn't have any on hand so I'm just adding some hot glue and then removing the excess off of the top of the wood piece. Once that was completed, I jumped right into painting. I added black acrylic paint all over the kitty cat. If you had made it this far with me and you are new here, I would love for you to subscribe today. All you have to do is click on that big red subscribe button down below and make sure to click on the bell notification so that YouTube can always notify you when I upload a new video. And I would love for you to be part of my virtual art family. Now I'm going in with some orange acrylic paint and adding it all over the jack-o'-lantern. Now my orange paint was acting a little strange because it was really old so I was struggling a little bit but I get the job done. <laughs> Next I take some java paint from my folk art home decor chalk paint collection and I add it to the stem. Next I take a paper towel and wipe off the excess paint and I start dry brushing that all over the jack-o'-lantern just to give it some more depth and a little more pizzazz if you will. <laughs> Hey, if you are enjoying today's video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. It really does help out my channel and it lets me know to keep creating DIYs for you. I am just taking a very small detailed brush and some Java chalk paint and adding it to the eyes, nose, and mouth of the jack-o'-lantern. I just felt like he was a little flat and this gave that pop that I was looking for. I then took some metallic silver paint and added it to the kitty cat's eyes. For the candy tray part of this DIY, I have this wooden tray from Dollar Tree in their crafter square section. But if you cannot find those, you can also use this wooden crate that they also carry. I just have one that's painted black from a previous project. Since it was already painted black, I did wanted to add some more detail to it. So I'm adding some white stripes all over each side of the tray. Once the tray was dry, this is how it turned out. It really gives me some Beetlejuice vibes that I absolutely love. And it does go with a lot of my Halloween decoration and home decor. The next step is to add everything together. So at first I thought I was going to put it at the back of the tray on a slant, but then I realized I liked it completely in the center of the tray. So to hold up my little kitty cat, I have some of these wooden blocks that Dollar Tree carries in their 
crafter square section and to hold it up I'm just using some hot glue so I'm placing a little dollop of hot glue on that little cube and then I'm putting it directly on the kitty's foot just so that I know the placement where to put the cat and the wooden cube after I hot glue it down And as you see here, I'm just adding some more hot glue to the bottom of those cubes and then I place it back in the center of the tray. So since this is technically a double-sided candy tray, I wanted to cover, cover those cubes using black acrylic paint. And once that was dry, all I had to do was add some candy. I added it right next to my little kitty cat, but he was not thrilled. He actually wanted me to go away and stop filming. But I absolutely loved how this project turned out. It came out so adorable. It was so easy. And I think it would be perfect for my Halloween decor. I would love to know what you think about this DIY down in the comment section below. Here is a quick overview of all the DIYs that I have created today. They were such a blast to make and they were very affordable and easy to do. Remember, if you are new here and haven't yet subscribed, I would love for you to do that today. All you have to do is click on that big red subscribe button down below and make sure to click on the bell notification so that YouTube can always notify you when I upload a new video. And I would love for you to be part of my virtual art family. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to click on that big thumbs up button it really does help out my channel and lets me know to keep creating these diys for you as always i hope you enjoyed today's video leave me a comment down below to which one was your favorite and i will see you in the next one